As you know, the prayer wheel ends essentially with the very same way we started. In fact, let me put that diagram up one more time. The same without any um, cover. And now, of course, you're very familiar with the, the little drawing, very clever drawing, to show all the, the essence. As you can see, number one and number twelve both end up being praise. So, in essence, we begin our time of prayer and we end our time of prayer with simply praising God. So, let's quickly cover that. Of course, we've already studied it, but why praise? Why do you think it's appropriate to begin and end with praise? Do you remember when we studied the very first lesson? Why praise? Praise. What is praise exactly and why should we praise God? How does it begin our prayer and does it end our prayer? In fact, praise the Lord. Yes, Brother Casey. Uh, the start of praise is to glorify the Lord for who He is. Yes. Uh, then praise is to the end. Yeah. To glorify the things that He's done for us and the... Um, the lessons that he gives you in your prayer form. Yes. <laughs> okay. That's all right. Take a take a moment. That's all right. Good to see you, Susie, Grant, and family. God bless you. Come sit down. There you go. Sorry, Casey. Go ahead. Uh, praise the Lord. The Lord who He is, what He's done for us, and uh, and the Lord at the end is for. Thanking him for the lessons that he, or what he tells you and what he instructs you. Okay. Alright, so basically the praise is to give God thanks from your heart at the end of the prayer for what you've just heard through, through that time of prayer. Okay. It actually helps you to contemplate a little bit about the awesome wonder of the God you've just prayed and spoken to, you've sung to. Remember through the time of prayer we have done quite a bit, haven't we? We've actually gone through uh, a time of personal confession. We've opened ourselves up to God. We have interceded for others. We have actually watched and prayed against the evil one and found his power in Jesus' name. We've we've taken time to petition for our own personal needs and, and to give him thanks for the things he does supply us with. Tonight, what I really wanted to do was to hear a little bit from you about each one of these steps as you have found it beneficial in your life. But that time of praise at the very beginning prepares you for prayer and then the same praise prepares you really for the day to carry, I guess, all that you've received into the day with you. Remember, prayer is not just an hour's exercise and then forgotten. It's sad when we relegate prayer just to one time of the day, as it were, just one hour. Whilst perhaps this is a focus time and it should exist every day, <coughs> prayer really should be something that we carry with us throughout the day. In any one moment, to be able to turn our minds to the Lord and offer but a brief, perhaps, but a prayer nevertheless, and it could be in any one of these areas during the day. Anyone else with a suggestion? Yes, Brother Mark. Uh, I think um, along the lines of uh, there's not much you can give somebody that's got everything. That's beautiful, Brother, that's for sure. It's um, with God, like you can give him your obedience, yes. and, and that's required, but this is the time, this is something you can actually give God. It's sort of a gift just to, to say thanks, is the, the praise from your heart. Very right? good. Very good. I love that thought. If you remember when we studied praise at the very beginning, we actually discussed this very point. What is it that we can give God? Now we say, oh, you know, service and obedience and so forth. But all these things really, in a sense, are very much part of what we should do. It's our reasonable service to God. Yet praise is something that comes or should flow freely from our hearts. It should be something that is a natural response to of his love for us. And when we praise him this way, we are offering something that God appreciates so very, very much. Because it is A, vocal. Remember, praise is vocal. It isn't just in your head. Okay? And B, it is a response of the heart that's thankful. And in praise, you're really extolling some aspect of (coughs) God's nature. Remember that when we give thanks, we give thanks for the things he does, for the things he gives us. When we praise, what do we do? What is it that we thank him for? What is it we are appraising him about? For who he is. It is in this relationship that we find the greatest depth, the greatest importance of our Christian walk. Remember, our personal devotion isn't about things. It isn't about just service. It's about being close to Jesus himself. Too many people think of God as some sort of vending machine. Lord, 
uh, give me such and such. You know, it's like putting something in the coin slot and pulling the, the handle or something, pushing the button. God is not a vending machine. Even though we do ask for things, we need to remember that before anything else, and at the end of everything else, what should remain is our relationship with Him. In praise, we don't just ask for things, we don't just praise Him for things, we praise Him specifically for who He is, or some aspect of what He is. So, for instance, if you were to praise God, how would you praise Him? Now, remember, we're talking who He is. Give me an example of some aspect of God that we could praise. Come on. Yes, Brother Casey. Uh, Try to respect the the position that he holds in our life as the Creator and our Father. Okay. Uh, David said, you are my God and I will praise Him. You're my Creator. Many times it referred to that very wording. Uh, You're the Father, my Father. What else? Yes. His love. God is love. And you can praise Him for the fact that He is love in your life. And that He affects and helps with every aspect of love. And keeps love happening within your life. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. For anything that He has given us in us. He is the gift giver, isn't it? And we, we can see that whilst we can praise Him for the things He does. In praise, really, we should praise Him for who He is. And the ability that He puts within every one of us. Holiness. God is a holy God. We praise Him for His holiness. That's what distinguishes us uh, from the world and makes us separate unto Him. What else can we praise God for? Yes. Victory. victory. All right. He's victory in our lives. He gives us the victory, but He's the victory in us. Anything else you can think oh, of? Mercy. Yes, His love, His mercy. He's my salvation. How many times have you do you read in the Psalms? Uh, David crying out to God, you are my Savior, my salvation, God, my salvation. When you say Jesus, you're saying just that, Yahweh, my salvation. Think about that. That's it, The very name of Jesus is a praise in itself, very much so because it's saying, God, you are my salvation. So you can see that whenever you find and, and extol or lift up an attribute of God, be it his omniscience, be it the fact that he knows all things, be it the fact that he's holy, be it the fact that he is love, you are praising God. And this is probably one of the highest things that we can do in our service unto God. Interestingly, God appreciates praise so much that in heaven, day and night, if you could measure day and night up there, eternally, there are angels and there are uh, creatures constantly, absolutely, continuously praising Him and praising His name. Now, uh, uh, to me, that is worship that uh, we want to get used to in our own lives down here. Amen? You know, you can make your entire day a worship unto God. Every moment of the day, you can find something if you look for it. And certainly throughout the day, there's many opportunities that can be made to praise Him. I guess you could say that praise begins... Uh, by recognizing God's nature and it ends by recognizing God's nature. Let's look up that verse of scripture, Psalm 63 and 3 and also Psalm 52 and 9. Turn those up for me and let's have a look at what they say. Okay, who has uh, Psalm uh, 63 and 3 for us? Please just read it out. Praise the Lord. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise Him. God is the giver of life and we should thank Him and praise Him for it. Praise God. Beautiful, isn't it? David was full of praises for God. You, you cannot read through the book of Psalms without getting this feeling, this indication that David had a heart constantly filled with the praises for God. Now, if we begin our time of prayer with such a heart, then we should also end it with the same heart. In fact, somebody said we really should learn to take the spirit of praise with us from the prayer closet into our day. What does Psalm 52 and uh, 9 say? Praise God. How often will I praise you? Forever. Now, that's a pretty long time, isn't it? So we must really remember that our praises should begin right here and really continue forever. You should never get tired to praise God. There are so many things we can praise Him for in His nature. His nature is the very thing that is in focus here. If you would make this a practice um, to take this praise away from the prayer closet and into your day. Who knows, maybe throughout the day 
uh, you might well uh, find yourself in a situation where it's been a little bit difficult, you've had a struggle, and God will give you the strength to make it through. That's a good moment to stop for a little, just for a moment. It doesn't have to be a very long time. You don't have to kneel there for an extra hour again, but just for a moment to turn your eyes towards heaven, as it were, and your heart lifts up in a praise, in a thanks to the Lord. I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. If you'll remember, in this chapter, Jesus actually gave us, as it were, a pattern of prayer. When the apostles asked him, Lord, teach us how to pray, he responded this way. In fact, let's read from about verse um, 5 there, if you will. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of man. Remember, Prayer is an exercise between you and God largely. It's an act of devotion to Him. You should never do it to be seen of others to pray. Verily, He said, they have their reward. You get nothing benefit out of prayer if you do it just to be seen of others that you're praying. Okay, in verse 6, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. It's a private place of prayer. And uh, when thou hast shut thy door... Pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. So he is suggesting very strongly that we find a a place apart to give these praises and uh, and to uh, call on the name of the Lord and to pray, and not to be seen of men in this, but rather to do it as it were between us and God. And God rewards us openly. So is it true to say that if we pray secretly in the sense of between us and God, the evidence of that prayer can be seen openly? Isn't that what this is teaching? He will reward us openly. It can be noticed. It can be noticed when we pray. And it can also be noticed, unfortunately, when we're not praying. Generally speaking, Christians that pray are happy Christians. They are overcoming Christians. They are Christians that are full of praise and thanks and joy of of the Lord. And when we don't, unfortunately, quite the opposite is ready. Then he says, when you pray, don't use vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they're going to be heard for their much speaking. Now remember we covered this. It isn't repetition that is a problem. But what kind of repetition? Vain. Vain. What does that mean? Empty. Okay. Without purpose. So it's not a problem to ask God the same need or the same thing several days in a row or several times in a row. What is important is that we don't have empty repetitions that are meaningless and there are no purpose to them. And then in verse 8 he says, So be you not therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. So he then says, After this manner pray ye. I want you to notice verse 9, and then we'll read through and then notice specifically verse 13. That's the beginning and the ending of the prayer pattern that Jesus gave us. Verse 9 says, After this manner pray, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What does his prayer start with? Praise. Beautiful, isn't it? And then, of course, he speaks through, he says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And then look at verse 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. What does he conclude with? Once again, you can see, he begins with praise and he ends with we praise. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so you can see even in the prayer pattern that Jesus gave, a simple but very powerful one, it begins with a praise unto God and it ends with that very same praise. All right. Anything else you think is important about praise that we should say tonight? What is important about ending this prayer in this manner? Brother Mark. Thank you very much. I think that lifts yourself. You walk away from, from prayer and uplifted. Okay. When you're, you're really praising God, praise the joy in that, and that just transforms right through the whole life and you walk away from Praise from God. That joy. Praise the Lord. It certainly t- helps you to take a little bit of that time of prayer into the day with you. It's interesting in, in that sense too that notice throughout the prayer we have actually have done quite a bit of asking, haven't we? And that we should really begin and end the prayer, not so much with asking, but really in a sense giving, giving the only thing we can give the Lord, and that is, in fact, a heartfelt prayer, an offering from our lips and prayerfully from our hearts too. Praise God. 
All right, well, I really want to only just to touch on the concept of praise one more time because we have studied it at length. In fact, over the last few weeks where we have done this course in prayer and we've looked at each one of these elements from the scriptures and we've tried to assemble them in our prayer hour, I trust that you have been able to put some of these things into practice and that your prayer life has been improved, increased, benefited by the exercise. I guess what I wanted to do tonight as part of our lesson, for the next few minutes at least, is just to hear from you. Okay, perhaps you had never thought of, I don't know, uh, singing unto God. Or maybe you had never really uh, seen what it was really like to uh, pray the scriptures. And, and because of the study, you may have actually inserted this into your prayer life. I wonder if you can share with us your testimony. Has it benefited you? If so, how? What part would you say has been a blessing to you? If you can share with us, we would like to hear from, from you uh, to see tonight as we conclude this study a series of studies that has been, just exactly how did it bless you? How has it helped you in any way? And how is it continuing to help? Anyone would like to help to help us tonight to tell us a little bit about it? Yes, Brother Casey. Uh, just to touch on the listening aspect of it, how much in prayer, how much in the Lord, and 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 the Lord, no, I have a little Okay. Um, but in the scriptures, the Lord said, showed me on a couple of occasions. Beautiful. How to go about earlier. Yeah. And in, you know, listening, you always know, no, no choice. Right. Very, very good. Praise God. So you found the listening part, it's been really a blessing to you because you've found direction. Somewhere there. That's beautiful, isn't it? In fact, I dare say that that, and we covered this this last time, how important is it that when we've done all of our talking, well, that we stop just to listen, listen to what God is saying. And remember, God will speak to you right through the time of prayer, and if you listen, really, He's talking to you all the time, right through the day. Anyone else? Yeah, just confession, like I find when you confess uh, your sins and you're confessing uh, certain animosities towards people, it helps you to get towards the forgiveness. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Isn't that an amazingly powerful tool for reading ourselves of luggage and baggage we don't really need? Confess it before God. And if you remember, one of the key aspects of that, of that part of our prayer is not to be too kind to ourselves or our flesh. When we confess, we call it for what it is. Don't mince words before God. Be honest and fair. Call it for what it is. And then you'll know that you have poured it out before the Lord with all of your heart. And the idea of confession, of course, is to leave it right there, put it under the blood of Jesus so that you never have to pick it up again. And you walk away feeling so much more lifted. You're then ready to really go ahead to the other aspects of prayer. You've left a luggage, a burden, something you didn't need to carry right there. When we started this series of lessons, we discussed together one of the problems in prayer is mind wandering, you know, going off on, on its own little trip. Who has found that by having a structure of this nature has helped to keep the mind on target? If you, let me see your hand if, if it's been a blessing to you that way. Because I've found that that's probably one of the greatest benefits of having a plan for prayer. Now remember that what we said at the very beginning, we shouldn't be so sort of tied to the pattern of prayer that we don't follow after the Spirit. In other words, this is only a pattern. Uh, it's true to say that some mornings, uh, God may well uh, cause you to stop at the very... At the very step of confession, you might not even get any further than that. And that's the nature of your prayer. Some mornings, perhaps, meditation is what really sort of grabs you. And I'm not saying that you should leave everything else out. But there are times when the pattern, uh, this and other patterns, are just changed. Naturally, to have something to fall back on, however, that's comfortable, that's there, that you can follow, should help to keep our minds on target. Lest the hour passes with mind wanderings and we've been everywhere except where we should be before, before the throne of God. Sister Jerry. Um, a couple of times I went back to the old style of praying just, I don't know, I just thought I'll just do that for a couple of days. And I just missed the empowering of this day. Okay. It felt so much more empowering. I just felt that I got so much more <coughs> for the day or something. Lord, you need more than I need for it. Praise the Lord, that's good. All right. Anyone else? Yes, sister Chris Weiss. Beautiful, yes.
Praise the Lord. I think my only problem I have, Sister First Rise, is when I get to intercession, my list gets so long that I've got to naturally curtail it for that day just to be able to focus in on just some specifics. But you're right, isn't it true? Every area of it is indeed a, a great blessing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Any other comments that you'd like to make on it? Yeah, please. Uh, talking about repentance, sometimes I find out after you sing and then you go back to the intercession. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's beautiful. All right. That can happen too, by the way. We put them in a certain order, but they don't necessarily have to stick to that. You can sometimes, something that's laid on your heart, you can certainly return to an aspect of it. Yeah? Just a little bit. Um, like the one thing, like when you pray that you can ask the Lord to show you um, someone's needs, and you can ask the Lord to show you that they need to be Beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. And it's amazing really how much of that does happen. That's beautiful. The Spirit of God will cause you to sing beautiful tunes that you probably could never repeat any other time. But that moment, it just flows from the heart. And both, as you say, in your native language and or in tongues. Great, great uplifting in the Spirit when we sing this way. Anyone else with a comment? Brother Mark, please. I found the uh, meditation the developing the habit for reading the word before I pray. Yes. It's amazing how many times that's the actual answer in the course of the prayer. Yes. Just, just through going through the Psalms and then uh, during the course of prayer, that's what I need to hear. And that actually fixes that. But when I read it, it wasn't on my mind. It wasn't until I brought it out in prayer mm. that the answer was revealed. Praise the Lord. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, once again, notice that each one of these factors, as it were, lock into one another. Sometimes you you might be praying for a need, and just while you are interceding for someone else, God reminds you of some other aspect of your own life that you need to bring before Him. Or once again, in meditation. So, they do inter- interlock, and those words that you read from the Scriptures that you're meditating on may well be the very answer for the entire theme of your prayer for that morning. Certainly, meditation I found to be incredibly powerful and it takes me into the day with with a new zest. You know, the joy of the Lord should be renewed every day. The scripture says this of the joy of the Lord, that it is our strength. It says the joy of the Lord is your strength. And where do we find this joy? But in prayer, before God. When we get into the word of God this way, when we get into his presence, we find a joy that can help us throughout the day. And it's it's a strength to us. We can't go in our own strength. We need to grow in God's strength. Anyone else to comment on the prayer wheel? Yes, please, Jim. I just wanted to say thank you so much for bringing these lessons. Every single aspect has been a blessing for me. I've learned so much in every single one that I thought, oh yeah, I know about that. And it's been open to my understanding. It's been open to uh, the first one we put this up on, looked it up, I thought, oh my goodness, how am I going to squeeze all that into one hour? How am I going to do it? How am I going to do it? And I find that now that I need more time, but particularly the watching and the singing was something that um, has really opened up for me. And I just found my prayer life to be so much absolutely enriched and enhanced by using this. Praise God. That is good and beautiful to hear. Beautiful. Praise the Lord. Again, in the watching, I find that there are times when there is a real spiritual battle that happens. I guess you probably have experienced that yourselves of late, particularly of late, because it is there that we become painfully aware of the adversary's uh, methods. The scripture says we are not ignorant concerning his devices. We know what he's up to, and God can show you. And sometimes it is right there in watching uh, that God shows you how the enemy has been functioning in your own life or in the life of a dear one or for that matter in the life of a brother or sister or in some person or certainly in our society in whichever way he's been at work that's the very place where we can zero in and pray against him let me ask you at one stage we actually commented that from time to time it's not a bad idea at least if not every day but certainly from uh, every once in a while to write down your prayer has anybody found that useful at all? To actually jot down some of the thoughts, at least, that go through your prayer? Anybody try that? But what I've found is that at times recording some specific things has been such a blessing when you can go back then 
and review some of the things you, pr- you were praying about that time. You know, we are human, and so we're different, as it were, each day. The mindset, the way you feel, even your particular disposition is different each day. And it's interesting at times to go back to some of those prayers uh, and just see what your heart was feeling and thinking on that day and how God uh, touched you. So it's probably a good practice every once in a while at least to jot down some of those thoughts. There have been mornings when you'll go before God in prayer and even though you have a lot on your heart, you just don't get past that listening. God begins to speak to you and when that still small voice begins to speak, don't interrupt it. Listen, just listen, just take it all the way into your heart, listen. Because whenever God speaks, it's important that we take it on board, that we listen. In fact, if you can, keep a pad and a pen handy and jot down some of the things that God speaks to you about. You will have directives from God about that day or some aspect of your life or some decision you're making, some problem you might have been facing. And God has the answers. I think we stated a bit earlier, God has all the answers for all of our problems. It's just that we don't listen to his voice giving us the answers. Are there any questions about any, or any comments still, but questions about any aspect that we've studied that hasn't uh, been clear to you or some, um, something that you may have experienced that you'd like to query, query us on? We've been at this study, as I say, for some time, and so it's probably important that we make sure both you have a chance to express what you've experienced, but also that you might just, maybe if you have a question about any, any area that we can answer it before we move on to a different series. Yes, Sister Louise. I'm glad you said what you said before because I used to think, oh, I haven't done all of them, then I'm in trouble because... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Because there were times where it was where it was the waiting. I got the waiting and the Lord was going to the waiting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I'm thinking as if when I'm my wife's one, but it wasn't. I just thought that I was there in terms of the Lord. I just, I didn't have to speak. Okay. I didn't have to speak. I thought, oh, I've been lonely. I haven't been watching. <laughs> okay. So all right. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, let, let me stress that this is a, an aid, it's a tool to help you, not a whip to whip yourself with. Okay? If you start saying to yourself, oh, I didn't pray probably because I didn't cover every spot, well then, then really you're using it as a whip. This is only as a pattern to make sure that you sort of follow and you don't get lost in your thoughts and what have you. But it's very real to say that God may lead you to a different prayer within this or to a different pattern. That's fine, even if it happens every day. As long as you're actually praying and you're definitely doing what is necessary before God, that's not a problem at all. I found, though, that in most cases you'll find, even though uh, what Sister Louise just described, some mornings God will kind of hold you in one area and that's where you stay, uh, or even just take you straight there and that's where you stay, that in most days, it's okay. You will actually continue in that pattern. So don't go whipping yourself if you didn't do every every bit of the pattern. The other thing that I've found, and most, most of you may have found the same, when we first started talking about the hour of prayer, right? a lot of people thought, one whole hour? How am I going to do this, right? And uh, I pray that you can see how much easier it is by following a pattern of this nature to pray for that hour. Have you found that? Okay. Now, if you don't have a whole hour, those sections, as you know, can become smaller to fit your 15 minutes or 20 minutes. It doesn't really matter. Uh, what I've discovered is that in, in most cases where necessary, uh, some of those sections even stretch the other way, where instead of just a few minutes, you've had to take probably quite a lot longer. So it's flexible. It's not a whip for you. It's an aid. It's a tool to help you. Any other? Yes, yeah, sit, please. Um, you know, about why Waiting. waiting, yeah. I remember you said like the squeegee thing, but when you're waiting and then like you start to feel still praising the Lord. Yeah, yeah, oh yes, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Ideally waiting is is a mind clearing exercise. But if your mind is already cleared and you're right there with it, well really is praising is really what you're doing during that time. You're just uh, expressing your love to the Lord. Yeah, that's fine. And again, you don't have to uh, do a whole five minutes of waiting if you're already there where you ought to be. The purpose for waiting is really to bring our mind into subjection to the exercise of prayer. So if your mind tends to be a bit all over the place and you can't quite get it in, waiting is an ideal time just to kind of focus. That's the squeegee idea, kind of squeezing out all the other thoughts, right? Okay, but if your mind is there and and you're with it and you're focused, then you don't have to wait five minutes before you go on. You just... Thank the Lord and move right along. That's fine. 
more time to pray other things as well. Okay? Any other questions? This is good. If it's, there's anything that you've found in the in the teaching or if in the practice of this that's that's needed to be clarified for you, this is a good time to do it. Anyone else with a question or a contribution? Yeah, please, Brother Mike. Uh, it's probably um, twofold, but um, I'm just so thankful that we've got those 12 sections and that we've actually opened up each section yep. to see more understanding. And that, that's been a real blessing because uh, the cleansing of ourselves before we go in and then the purpose of that and the praise and all that's been a blessing. But just back on the singing, I, I know there's a couple of times about the same in the spirit, and that sort of gets me to a level. That's the sort of deepest. Yes. I'm actually, at that level, when I'm singing the spirit, that's the freedom. There's no inhibitation. I'm not inhibited. Right. I'm totally free. And and that's part A. But part B was I had a um, spiritual dream the other night, and I was actually singing that dream. And that the singing at that time is is you can't be compared to anything. Mm-hmm. The, the singing in that is is beyond whatever sort of singing you've ever heard. And not to blow a trumpet, but it was so precise yes. and so beautiful. And yet, even during that single time, I made a mistake. And I thought, ah, oh, you know, I made a mistake. And the Lord forgave you straight away. Right? Yes. And you allowed me to continue again. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's just how great yeah. God is. Even when you're at the most perfect, beautiful, yeah. And you can't go anywhere and you have to stay. Yeah. He says, that's fine. That's all right. Just go and you can't really work. And that's when you're there. Yeah. That is the best of the best. Really Praise good. the Lord. That's a, that's a beautiful testimony, Brother Mark. In fact, I don't know, has anyone else felt that way when you've reached that level of, of the singing and worshipping God that way? It's beautiful, isn't it? And there's something quite special about the aspect of a prayer that we call singing. Now, what's interesting about this is if you've ever stopped to think about this, think of the number of hymns that exist that have been written by Christian people. Where did those tunes come from? Where did the words come from? Ever, I mean, we read some words on Sunday, uh, so moving, so precise, so much in the spirit. Clearly, somebody was singing. Somebody was waiting on God, and God gave that inspiration. God gave the words. Now, I'm, I'm sure that uh, there must have been a lot of talented people with, you know, ability to compose. But much of this of this work has been done by individuals like you and I, who probably can't very much hold a tune in a bucket so much as we can pray to God. And in prayer, all too often, that's when these beautiful, glorious tunes that have stood the test of time, some of them, have come out. In thanks to God, in praise to Him, in reverence to Him. So, uh, sing to the Lord. Let it be a great deep, deepening experience in the Spirit, because it is, in fact, one of the be- most beautiful aspects of prayer, and one that, because we're shy sometimes, we don't use enough. Who still feels shy about singing? Are you still shy about it? Are you not comfortable with it? Who, who do you think is listening? <laughs> Okay, in most cases you're you're, uh, you're sort of by yourself. So, and you know something? Remember what we said: if the old frogs can croak away, then God can really enjoy your singing. It doesn't matter what it sounds like. Sorry, Grant, I saw your hand then. Praise the Lord! That's beautiful. That is beautiful. There's a real experience in that, and it stays with you, doesn't it? And uh, you know something. Uh, that can be renewed any day, any day you want to. Sometimes we look back, as Grant just did, you know, to some time ago. But, you know, God is there willing to bless us this way every day. In fact, every moment of the day, if that's what we choose. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Grant. That's lovely. Yes? Still on that point, that line, I remember that we said that seeing this power. Yeah. That that's sometimes the only way you can break through. Yeah. It's a blessing because I read scripture a few days ago. Through prayer, it was, uh, it was in Psalms 32. Verse 7, and it said that thou art my hiding place, thou shalt preserve me from trouble. And it said that thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Yeah, and very it's beautiful. Like, that's beautiful. It's like mm. songs of deliverance. Beautiful. Songs of Deliverance. It's interesting to note, if you remember, we actually studied this when we did the singing part, that going into battle all too often, the kings that were following after God didn't send up front those best elite uh, forces. What did they send? The singers to praise God. It kind of spearheaded the battle. Think about that. Many times they didn't even have to fight because the battle was won through the glorious praises of the Lord. 
Think of the times when great messages came from heaven, such as when, for instance, God uh, delivered the people of Israel from the Egyptians. Remember that? Do you remember what followed that event? Miriam, along with all the others, took their tambles and they began to sing and dance before the Lord. Songs of praises. What about when Mary was delivered the message about the new coming birth of Jesus? The angel said, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. And that which is born in you will be called the Holy One, born of the Spirit. Her response to this, a great song of singing and praise. To this day, one of the most beautiful worship songs, I guess you could say, that is recorded in the Bible. Singing unto God, a beautiful example, a beautiful expression of our love. Yes, it does mean that we've got to humble ourselves because we get a bit shy when we sing. But you know something, if you let yourself just do that before the Lord, it will definitely be a blessing. Anything else you'd like to contribute? I want to leave you... Yep, say Sister Grant. When you're singing, actually, your voice has become really good. I could believe it. Really, especially when you're singing in the spirit. That's true. Wow, yeah. That yeah, that's true. Don't you wish you could sing like that all the time? Yeah. It's true, isn't it? Yeah, it's very true. It's true. Well, I was thinking, um, well, it was the other day and I was singing in the spirit and, um, and I just thought, oh, that tune, Yeah. I, I recognise the tune. And it was, I, I must have been, well, it was a song that I heard years ago. It was Love is a Man, It's Lady of Things. All right. But it sort of fitted in that, and I remember um, Sister Janine um, made up this, or she, the Lord gave her a song, and I was over at my um, having a music uh, lesson, and people, uh, the, the teacher said to me, oh, come and listen to this music, it's so beautiful. She said, but it doesn't have any words, and she started playing it, and I said, I recognise that tune. Yeah, yeah. And it was the same tune that Sister Janine right. um, had... Uh, the Lord given me, given yeah. her these words. It's a beautiful. Song. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's that's true, and that can very well happen. In in singing, by the way, there is virtually no limitation here. Let me explain that as we we have studied this. But to say that it can be in your native language, it can be a tune you recognise. Usually, it's a scriptural tune or a chorus or a hymn or what have you, uh, or it can be in tongues. And once again, with a tune perhaps that you've never heard before, literally from heaven itself. You know, I believe when we get to heaven, we will be amazed at the songs of praises and the sounds of worship to God. Songs that we have never heard. You know, the scripture says, I has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for us in heaven. And yet, he goes on to add, God has revealed them to us. Now, we have not seen them. We are going to be amazed up there. And yet, when we're in the spirit, and these are the very times when God reveals them to us, in the spirit of prayer, in the spirit in heaven, as it were, in heavenly places, already we begin to get glimpses of what it's really going to be like. So, no wonder heaven is better than this. We've got a down payment, saints, down here on earth, but in heaven we'll get the full reward, the full payment. It's going to be quite something, and I'm looking forward to being there. Anyone else before I close the meeting? I don't want to leave you out. Yes, please, Grant. I'd just like to thank God for uh, a beautiful sister Louise who come and visit today and ask us to come to church. Okay? Praise the Lord. And, and there are all the others that have been praying for the You have all been very much in our prayers and it's great to see your faces yeah, again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's great. Glory to God. Yes, Brother Alan. That's given me enough courage. This morning, um, I just want to mention about the listening. I was praying this morning and uh, Susie and Grant have been across my mind for several months. Right. And God showed me to pray for them this morning. Beautiful. And then they turned up tonight and walked in the door. And I sort of, it wasn't until a couple of minutes that I remembered that. Yeah. That's beautiful, brother, and thank you. You see how God speaks? Hey, listen, this leaves Telstra Communications for dead. God, God's Spirit is so much more powerful and direct and has no limits. You don't have to watch or look out or worry about a signal. It's there. All we've got to do is tune in. And if we listen carefully in the Spirit, it's amazing just how God does reach our hearts with the messages and the needs that we need to pray for. Please... Put these things into practice, saints. Make sure that your devotion time, your time with God is so strong, so precious. Don't don't miss the appointment with God. Don't miss them. We, we, you know, we tend to keep more appointments with 
fellow men and put more importance on our business appointments and our appointments with the dentist and the doctors than we do with God. Make sure that you're serious about that time with God. Amen. Make a time with Him. And then when you do, make a count. Make it something quite beautiful because in this strengthening of your personal devotion, you are building your life in Christ. Everything else, listen to this, everything else you will ever do for God can only be as strong as your personal prayer time, as your personal devotion. And if you don't believe that, talk to anybody that's ever worked solidly for God and they will, you will find that they have to pray more. They have to develop a stronger base of relationship with Jesus from which flows out their service. You can't do it the other way around. And so, in fact, if we do, if we just serve with that relationship, we quickly run out and our work becomes nothing. Prayer. What a beautiful subject. I guess we have certainly been giving it our full attention for quite some time. And uh, no doubt it won't be the last time we'll be teaching and preaching about it. But I pray that it's been a blessing to you. Why don't you stand with me and let's thank the Lord together for, the, uh, for both the study and the time we've had tonight.